Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to show you how we make our candles from venison fat, or as we like to call them, the buck candle. Okay, so welcome back. You can see Jackie and I have broken down that buck she got. Um, we've got a lot of the leftover trim, so this is just deer fat. Deer fat's got like a waxy kind of coating to it. It's not very pleasant uh, if you get it mixed in uh, with food. It's not like pork fat or something. Um, so we've trimmed off a lot of the fat here, and what we're going to do with all this is we don't like to waste anything so what we don't give to our chickens we're going to take and we're going to use it to make uh deer tallow candles so it's a great you know just way of utilizing the deer we respect the animal just want to make sure we use it as much as possible so there's a lot here um and nothing's going to go to waste Okay, so we've already processed uh, all the cuts off the deer and this is all just a leftover. Most of it's just, you know, the deer fat, the tallow that's in here, little cuts of meat with tendons and things like that. There's a lot of fat that's interconnected with all of that. So we're gonna add some water to this pot. We're gonna fill it so it gets about two inches above the fat. So some of it's gonna float, but try to get about two inches above the, uh, the level of fat that's in here. Okay, so we're done. We put actually about three inches above the solid level in here, just so when that fat starts to render down and boil off, it's gonna float up and there's gonna be a good barrier of water between that hardened um, oil level where the uh, all the tallow is gonna rise up, right? And it's gonna leave all the sediment below. And so when we come out in the morning time, like what we'll do is we'll boil it down. And then once it's done, we've boiled it for about two to three hours generally. Um, and then in the morning we'll come out because it's cold out we can put it outside top will freeze and harden and then it's going to come off like a nice big puck of uh of tallow um, and then we'll take that reheat it up again and then we'll strain it out and then we'll have a nice clean block so let's get this started okay. i'm running on about medium heat we'll let that go Sorry about all the rain, um, all the snow melting, it's just a bit noisy, but all right, so we put these outside and uh, we let them cool and you can see <clears throat> we've got a nice thick um, layer of tallow here and there's going to be some fat stuck in here and we're going to take this out and put it in a bowl and the rest of it will strain it out and that'll go to the chickens and they really like that for their wintertime fat. So here you can see we've got a lot, it's going to be just like a thick puck that we can take out and that's what we're going to use as our candle wax. Okay, so Jackie got her buck a few days ago and we're back to getting on those candles. We had previously boiled down all that fat and everything um, and then we ended up getting that puck of uh, tallow. Um, and before we start rendering it further, what we're going to do is we wanted to come out and get some ingredients for the candles. We like to use balsam. See here, some balsam. We'll just break a tip off. And we're going to take a few of these. So I've had a bunch of snow here. But we like to use the needle inside the candles. You know what? I'm going to take a little bit of spruce too. Because it's nice to have some spruce in there as well. Any kind of evergreen will do, whether it's cedar, pine, spruce, or... For, there we are so that should be a good amount um, and we're going to use these as one of the ingredients in our deer tallow uh, candles I think that's enough Okay, so we've strained both buckets of all the trimmings and stuff. We've taken those big thick pucks of hardened fat 
off the top. And this is what we ended up with, like chunks of just fat with some of the uh, fat and other stuff that are still stuck in there. It's not very pretty. It smells pretty bad. Um, but we're going to take this, put it back. We've cleaned this pot. We're going to put it back in here. Render this down one more time, and then we're going to strain it through a strainer to get all these large pieces out. And then we'll be left with just straight fat. And we'll do a second straining after that. Second round is all boiled down now. So I've just turned off the heat. It's still really hot. Um, and earlier today, Jackie and I went out partridge hunting and we picked up some balsam. This is one of the ingredients I like to add. So what I do is I like to just strain some of this off the brows here. And then you can get these needles and collect a bunch of these needles in uh, just a container so they're easy to work with. And we'll add these in in a little bit. There's a bit of a technique to it, I'll show you. Uh, but I think that should be enough of the spruce and balsam needles for this. Okay, probably about uh, a third of a cup of needles right here. Got my needles done. Um, they're put aside. What I like to do next is make the wick. Um, I mean, there's other ways of doing this. This is just the way I do it. Normally I'll use a washer, but I'm out. So I've got a nut, a pretty large, heavy one. We'll put this on, we'll tie a knot to it. I just like to move that up top so it sits on the bottom. This makes it a little easier to work with. So I'm going to move the top of that up, shove that in the hole. I'm trying to make sure, make sure it's heavy enough that it can kind of hang like this, right? And sit on its flat end. And we're going to be placing that inside one of these jars um, after we get the oil in. So we're going to strain that oil now. So this part is not very enjoyable, but we're going to strain out all the oil. And all the fat that's left over is just going to kind of sit right there. And that will get cooled down and go to the chickens and such later. Um, but in the meantime, we're just going to strain as much of this into the container as possible. I like to use something like this. It's a bit of a finer strain because then you can catch any of the ex excess pieces that you really don't want and not really desirable in your candle. And this is going to turn nice and white. It's going to be nice and clean. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll, before it gets to that point, we're going to pour these into the jars and we'll let them start to cool. And we won't do anything with the, the ingredients until they cool a bit. So at this point, I would recommend putting it back outside or in a cool place so that you can allow that puck to form again. And then do a second boil down in a pot so that you can render out the water further. Um, this will just help make sure that you don't get any water in the bottom of your jars when you make your candles pure oil and that would have otherwise been thrown out so generally I get about five candles um, with a deer um, and this is just on a first burn if you do burn all that fat down again a second time you might get another candle or two um, but here this is what I get this are four of the 250 mil jars and one of the 500 mil jars so I'm going to start pouring these and it's not gonna stay this look. It's gonna change, but we're gonna fill these jars up. It's really hot. So just, just think of it as melted butter. But it, it really is just lard. Okay, so we actually ended up getting six jars, which is quite a lot. So let's be quite happy with that. That's five 250 mils and one 500 mil. So we're gonna let these start to cool and we're gonna get our spices ready because you don't wanna burn them just like this. It's only gonna smell like burning fat. So. so for the spices that I like to have, like when you're burning one of these, you want it to smell like something other than just, you know, lard. So what I'll do is I'll add some, some cloves Ooh, that's a strong one. So cloves is one of the ones I like to add a fair bit more of. It's got a much more potent smell. And it smells really nice. It kind of smells like baking. So 
I like to add cinnamon to this as well. I think that was the nutmeg I just added actually. And here's the cinnamon. So cloves, cinnamon, and nutmeg. It's kind of like a pumpkin pie spice. Um, so I'll just give this a little bit of a mix. And there's one more thing I like to add to this as well. Um, and it just gives it a little bit of an extra nice smell. So I'm gonna add a touch of coffee grinds. Well, maybe more than a touch, but here we go. It's nice to have some coffee grinds in this. It gives it a nice look, a little bit of a different um, appeal. So it's really nice and it gives it a really nice mixed smell, you know, a coffee, almost like coffee on a day that you're baking. And this with the balsam goes really nice with the candles, but we can't add it yet. So if I were just to take these spices and mix them in here and stir it around, everything's gonna to settle to the bottom and you're just gonna have a clear white candle and it's not gonna be what you want. So we have to wait a little bit. You can see that I had tied that on to the nut earlier. And what I'll do is I'll line these jars up, I'll grab a skewer um, and I'll tie each one on individually um, just so I have it according to jar. So I have those other three jars, I'll get to them. Um, and it's good to do this beforehand so you can line them up and put them in the jars so you get just enough that by the time it's sitting, they're gonna be tight and straight, right? So that's what you want to be sticking straight up. So it's just the right amount that is just off the bottom of the jar and keeps that straight. Now, when we add our ingredients to this, um, we're gonna see it turn a bit of a milky white color and that's when you know it's time to act because it, the process for it to harden up goes really fast and we need to dip these into the jar. It's the last thing we do is dip these into the jar. No, it's not ready yet. I'm just gonna wait for it to turn that milky color. Okay, so we can see here how this one's starting to get to that cloudy color. It's still liquid, but it's starting to get, the viscosity's getting a little thicker, everything's getting a little bit better. So at this point, we're ready to add our ingredients. So I'm gonna add a scoop of our spice. Should just get a little bit more in there. I want it to be relatively strong. I'm gonna add some of our balsam needles. And then I'm gonna give it a stir. So this should distribute these ingredients through it evenly. Otherwise, if I'd done this too soon, they're gonna just sink all the way to the bottom. So now it's kind of the whole way through, it changes the color completely. And what I'm gonna do is to get the wick in here, I move it over so it goes in the middle. And this is why it's important that it stay right there. This one here looks like we're just about at the same point where we're almost ready to put some ingredients in here. So I'll give this another minute. You can see this one's starting to go much lighter color. Okay, so I just finished that one. This one here, it's nice and milky. I'm ready to start adding some ingredients. So I'm gonna add the spice first, and that's nutmeg, cinnamon, and cloves with some ground coffee. And I'm gonna grab here a scoop of balsam. And I get okay. that. I'll continue mixing this in. Try to get it all throughout the whole thing here. Okay, now that's gonna knock off a couple times. That's just because I'm being clumsy, but we'll get that one up and we'll get this screw in. Now this one here, that one's just about ready. So we can cut this one. Ready? Here, one is almost ready. It's gonna solidify a little bit more. There's one. Now this here, at this point, I really like to get it moved right into the middle. Take a look at this. It's very light in color. You can tell it's starting to harden up. So I'm gonna drop that in. It's gotta be a weight on there, thick enough to be able to get all the way to the bottom. And you'll know you're at the bottom because these would have been tight when you initially put it in. This one here is ready to come off. And I'm gonna give him just a little sprinkle of spice on top. It's just gonna melt right in. And here we have 
another nice spice. I could have mixed this one up a little more, but it's done and it's ready. So this guy here, we'll put him in now. And then we'll clean these up with some paper towel. Okay, there you have it. Candles are done. You can see they're both burning. They're all burning really well. The large one burns just as well as both these small ones. Um, I mean, the more spice you add, the difference uh, you'll start to notice in smell and just color and even the way it burns. But they all burn quite well. The jute twine works great. Um, and that's all there is to it with making your own deer candles. Just a great way to use up um, something that would have otherwise, otherwise been thrown out. Thanks for watching everyone and I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you liked what you've seen today. Hit subscribe if you want to see more and hit the notification bell just so you're reminded every time we upload.